Hello, this is Dr. Shanima Sataruna from the YouTube channel, Dr. To Help. Today, we are going to do a special video. This video is dedicated to all the women in this world. Yes, this is March and today is March 6th, 2022. March is Women's History Month and a lot of women have made a lot of sacrifice for us to reach where we are today. So I am dedicating this video to all the women small and large, who thinks they are tiny or big and tall, this video is for you. Growing up, I grew up in a very small country with a lot of population. It's a Muslim country and I was a tomboy. So when I was growing up, I had some common words that I used to hear all the time. Don't talk too loud. Don't run so much. Don't laugh aloud. You should not talk that way. You should not climb a tree. You are a girl. You should not sit like that. Have you ever heard those things? You probably did. Did you also hear these words? You are horrible. When you were born, my life was over. You were born given to this world just to torture me. I wish you were dead. I hope you never heard those words, but I did. And I also heard that you are dumb, you're ignorant, you are not interesting, you're boring, you're poor, a lot of things. We are poor, a lot of, a lot of those words. And what happens after you hear it over and over and over again, you believe it because you don't know any other world, right? Do you know of any other world to compare? You are looking through everybody's eyes that is surrounded by you. And maybe you're fortunate to have a parent or a two parent who may guide you in two different ways. Hmm? So for those who had to hurt this kind of things, I can tell you this, when I was in third grade, I already knew I wanted to be a doctor. My father was a doctor. I wanted to follow his path. And you know what he did? He became an orphan at very young age. When he became orphan, he only had a brother and a sister. And he was a village boy. He was told by his elder brother, we, you don't need to study, just work in the land. They had a lot of land. They were big land owners. So they were rich, but because our grandfather was not there, there was nobody to guide them. So one brother decided not to study. The other brother said, no, I'm gonna study no matter what. So the elder brother said, I'm not gonna support you. If you're gonna study, you have to do it on your own. So my father, he would walk three miles to the nearest school and come back three miles. And to pay for that school, he started doing odd jobs anything. He stayed in somebody's house, taught them. So that will pay for his boarding and pay for his school. And he became a doctor. He became a doctor. He became a specialist. And he also came to United States to do his special degree. I was his daughter. My mom was a teacher. And my father had no qualms about my mom driving or being independent he was confident enough to let her have that freedom. So my mother in the 1970s was driving in a small country called Bangladesh, it's east of India. And he, she was probably the only person who I ever saw a woman driver in Bangladesh. And yes, that turned a lot of head. But same mom used to tell me that you are a girl and you have your limitations. So I had to be home by sunset. My brothers did not. And I used to hate that feeling. I was like, why was I born a woman? Why was I born a girl? I hated that. I resented that. At the same time, I had a beautiful sister. She was beautiful. She was uh, smart. Everything you can want in a woman, she was. And I would look at her and think, gosh, why am I not like her? How did I? How is it that I am her sister and I am totally ignorant? I am dumb. I don't look beautiful. I have nothing to offer to this world. So nobody told me at that age that I have dyslexia. I did horrible at school. So I never told anyone I wanted to be a doctor. 
never. When I finished my school, my 10th grade, and then gave my SSC, that's the end of the 10th grade in Bangladesh, um, I got a so-so result. Around 8th grade and 9th grade, some of my teachers started noticing me. And I was doing good in math and English. So that was only one, two things that teachers were starting to notice me and thought I had some promise. But by the ninth grade, I had my best friend and she thought the world of me. Everything I did was amazing. And this girl who thought everything negative about her was surprised. Huh, how is this girl finding good things in me? Me? I know nothing. I'm an ignorant girl. I have nothing to offer to this world. But she made me believe in myself. A few of my teachers made me believe in myself. And they took me that hundred steps forward. And it is my time to take you a thousand feet forward. We can do it and we can do it together. When I finished my high school, I still got a so-so numbers, but guess what? All my friends, not my friends, my relatives, they were surprised. They did not expect me to do well. So I still at that point didn't tell them I want to be a doctor because I was not a good student. Nobody told me what is dyslexia, how to overcome the problems of dyslexia, how to help someone who has dyslexia. And now you know my son has it too. So now the responsibility is on me. So what did I do? I did everything I could. My friends, my teachers helped me. And in my mind, I was like, even if I have to give the test three times and I have to wait for three years, I'll still try to be a doctor. And I went to a coaching school that helped in entrance exam and for the medical school. So when I went there, some of my teachers were saying, oh, you're going to go to the best schools. And I was like, no, I'll be happy if I can go to any of the medical school. So when I got into med school, I surprised a lot of people, even myself. I was lucky because I could not memorize anything. And a lot of my med school teachers, one of them actually told me to my face, you cannot memorize? Why are you in a med school? You have so many things to do. You have to remember all the time. And I was like, that is true. But somehow, somehow, by the time I went to clinical, when you are in a med school by third grade, you do everything in the hospital and that's practical based. You do it with patient care and you do it directly with patient care. There's not much the reading becomes more listening and learning. Once I went there, everything changed. I, some of my teachers demanded me to answer questions right there in the class. And when they started asking, getting me on the front of the class, asking me questions, and I started answering, I surprised a lot of people. Because a lot of people thought, how is this girl passing? They never thought I knew anything. But at that point, things kind of started changing. Because at that point, I was starting to believe in myself. Remember that ignorant girl who's good for nothing? Uh, by the high school, she started winning some prize. I was be becoming a storyteller. I was become an actress. I was reciting. I was writing stories. I was going to martial arts. I even got an award in martial arts in the first women's martial arts competition in Bangladesh. I played for Mahladin. Yes. I was revolving slowly and slowly. And in med school first year, I actually got 13 awards. It was shocking again for me. I was good in a few sports things too. So altogether, things turned out much better for me. Then later also, at one point, I even heard somebody very close to me starting to say that you are a very mean girl. You pretend to be a good girl, but you are not. You are not God. You are nothing. You are mean. You're horrible. You're horrible to other people and you hurt everyone around you. And I believed it. You know, that whole core thing when you are growing up, 
depressed and believing everybody around you and you're thinking you are the mean, smallest little piece in this world, like a bug that crawled out of a stone and you wanted to smush it. I was that girl. So it's very easy for me to believe when people tell you things like this. Yes, that's probably true. I was even told I was ignorant, I was crazy, I should go to a psychiatrist, I should get help, blah, 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 blah. It took me many, many years, many, many years to find myself. You know what happens to a girl when they get hurt so many times? They grow a wall around them, around their heart, around their brain, because they don't want to get hurt again. And one of the times in my med school, in my dorm, I used to help everyone. I never turned anybody away. I felt like I had to make it worth for me to breathe. Yes, I had to make myself worthy to live on this world. So I felt I had to help everybody. If I helped even a single person, maybe God will think I'm something. So I never turned anybody away, never. Day after my final exam, no. Anybody who knocked on my door, it, I was there for them. And I tried my best. And it was not a pretend to be a leader. It was not a pretend to be someone I, I, to be famous. It was nothing like that. I just wanted to be worthy, worthy to my God. And believe me, there were so many times I asked God, can you please take me away? Because it was against my religion to take my own life. So when I was growing up, I have prayed, please God, just take me away. So when those hurtful thoughts came to me that you are mean, you are um, horrible, you are crazy, I believed it. But guess what? Here I am. Here I am. Who am I? Who are you? I want you to think about my story and I want you to put it in your life. For those people who think you're not good enough, I want you to think about it again. Look at yourself in the mirror. Look at the person you are and not how other people are looking at you. I want you to find that good person in you who wants to help other people, who just wants to be happy, who just wants to have a little bit of respect and love for yourself. And I know you are good. Please have a journal, a grateful journal. I want you to write down everything you have achieved in your life. Every happiness you have given to every soul that surrounded you. I want you to be kind. I want you to write five things that you did each and every day that you have done to help others. The good things that you have done. Yeah? Well, guess what? This person not only became a doctor, I was a doctor in Bangladesh. And I came to this country. I had to go through a whole branch of testing, medical testing to get my license here. I had to establish as a doctor here. I had to prove myself that I was also good enough for America. So I went through my USMLE, I did my residency, and I joined the work as a hospitalist. Even as a hospitalist, those who know of what a hospitalist is, they work from day and night. It's a very hard work. You admit the patient from beginning, from the ER, all the way to the discharge. You are responsible for that patient. And you may have 80 to 47 patients to take care of. Yes, I used to do that job and I did not get any rest. And after all these years of, I did 11 years as a hospitalist. I have also worked multiple jobs in different states. And finally, the last three years, I've been working in telemedicine at drsays.com and teledoc.com. And my life has changed. You know what happened when I hit 50? All of a sudden, all those hurtful words, all those effect kind of washed away from me. And you know what? At one point, you realize that no, People are not going to hurt me anymore. I will not let people hurt me anymore. I am a good person. I told myself I am not bad. 
I am not crazy. I have worked so hard in so many different jobs and I have become successful. In the last three years in telemedicine, I have good patient and my boss tells me I have more patient across all states and across all physicians who have multiple licenses and I only practice in Texas. I think that's an achievement, don't you? I am happy. I am happy. And I felt like all the walls surrounding me just suddenly dropped. And I looked at myself and I said, what did I become? I didn't do anything in my life. Last 20 years in the United States, all I did was work and take care of my kids. I did nothing for this world. And that's how I started my YouTube channel. I wanted to help people. And when I first started help opening this channel, it was to targeted to the Texas, Texas Tech students and their family. And, grad, and I used to think, okay, if I can help one or two people, that's still good. It is worth my little free time that I have. Gradually now, we have more than 2,000 subscribers all over the world. People ask questions, people ask help, and I try to help them. And I feel good. And when I hear little girls, okay, not little girls, in my eyes, little girls, I'm going to be 52 in October, right? For me, they are little girls. And when they say the Texas Tech students group, somebody from that group tells me that I want to be like you. And I'm surprised. You want to be like me? You know what my answer is to them? I tell them, no, don't be like me. Be better than me. And I know you can do it. I am nobody. But I am somebody. I know I'm somebody. And I know I don't hurt people. I know I try to help people. I try to motivate my patients who come to me with depression, stress, and anxiety. And they are ready to give up. I give them that support and they tell me they feel good. After they talk to me for 10, 20 minutes, they tell me, I haven't felt this good for a very long time. So yes, I am reaching some people. I am doing some good and I try not to hurt people, not at least knowingly. If I have hurt any people at any time, I do ask for forgiveness. I just want to help people and I want you to find you. Believe me, you are good. You are worthy. You deserve to be happy. You may be a housewife. You may be a teacher. You may be a nurse, doctor, a lawyer, a businessman. You may be successful. You may be not. But everybody deserves happiness. I want you to be best in whatever you are. If you think you're not good enough because you're a housewife, you have second guessing. Guess who has the hardest work in this world? You, because you are raising your child. You don't get a break from morning to end of the day. You are taking care of your house, your husband, your children. You're making sure they're healthy. They're eating their food. They're doing their studies. They're working and doing their homework before for school and that they are successful. You are making that next generation successful. If you think you are not doing a hard job, then I don't know what you are doing because I can tell you I have two kids and when I take care of them at home, especially my daughter when she won't eat and can take three hours to eat dinner, I would rather go and see 20 patients online. It's easier for me. So being only a mom or a dad and providing for your family at home all the time is a big job. You're a cashier at Walgreens, CVS. Yes, you're amazing. I see you. I see you at just working away nonstop, no break. And I just look at each and every one of you and I think, wow, you're amazing. I have seen people who are limping at Walgreens and moving stuff, putting them on the shelf, and they're not stopping. I've seen elderly people. Yes, elderly people. There's a lady called Jamie, sweetest smile ever in the 50th Street Lubbock Walgreens. Every time I see her, I just want to hug her. Sweetest person ever. And she is working hard with her limp and her arthritis. There's another person who has carpal tunnel syndrome. And she is also working hard wearing that wrist um, support. 
that's not stopping her either. I've seen Market Street, an elderly person carrying all the bags to the car. And um, he wanted to carry my bags and I was embarrassed. I was like, you, you don't need to carry my bags. I can carry myself. I, I'm not spoiled. I don't want you to carry my bags. I do want your company and I do want to compliment that you are working hard and I recognize you. I recognize you in every job you do. If you're cleaning that hospital, guess what? You're preventing infection. You are saving lives. Don't you ever put yourself down. Do the best of whatever you are, whatever you are. Do everything to improve your skills. And once you have you feel you are you have reached perfection, guess what you can do? Learn another skill and become best in that. You can be the best in whatever you are. And don't let anybody, anybody tell you otherwise. Because I made it here. I am that dyslexic girl who probably also had the ADHD. And I still made it to be a doctor. I made it to be a doctor in a foreign country. And I went through their system and I survived. And I survived beautifully. I have the most amazing patients in the whole wide world. And I love my job. It was my calling. And I am so blessed. God brought me here. And I appreciate him every second. I do not take anything for granted. A stranger smiles at me. I don't take it for granted. I will try to help everybody I can and you can do it too. And you know what? When you help others, you help yourself. You know why? You feel good about helping others. And yes, you can help a lot of people and there's no limit. There's so many ways you can help people. The sky is your limit. Live your life. Love yourself. You are worthy. You are lovable. You are amazing. And I believe in you. You must believe in yourself. Set yourself free. Let nothing negative pull you down. If there are people who are telling you negative things, try to walk away. Or even better, Turn around and tell them, I am good enough and this is why. You can do it. I did it. You can do it too. Stand up and fight. This is Women's History Month and this video is dedicated for you. All the women in this world, all the little girls, all the teenagers, all the young ladies and all the elderly and middle-aged people, all of you, I dedicate this video for you and I love you all. Take care and thank you for being here. If you like this video, subscribe and share it with other people. I hope I can reach a lot of people and I hope I can give you a little bit of hope to move on and shine. Love you all. Bye-bye.